waivers do they really work in this video we are going to be talking about i601 waivers of grounds of inadmissibility so let's get right into it do they really work my friend they can work right provided that you meet the requirement first so the first requirement is statutory requirement you have to meet statutory requirement okay simply means that you have to be qualified for the waiver in question there are three unwaivable offenses no matter what those are offenses that cannot be waived so if it's not statutory the statutory requirement hasn't been met then you cannot do it so we're talking about number one fall Sleep. claiming u.s citizenship okay u.s citizenship once you falsely claim u.s citizenship on your application and you do not retract it on time in other words you do not fight the claim um, and the decision becomes final you cannot waive it okay number two we're talking about frivolous asylum claim okay frivolous asylum claim so frivolous asylum claims if you file a claim that is frivolous my friend just know that if you do not fight it and the decision becomes final you cannot waive it okay frivolous simply means that while the big portion sorry let me get this so the big portion of your claim is a lie misrepresentation okay you have to be able to f fight this one this is major one you have to fight it if you do not fight it my friend it's going to stay like that and you cannot waive it okay and which that's why i always uh, tell people if you do not have a valid claim don't go don't go through this asylum process application and and you can save yourself too with a dismissal right let's say you feel like this claim can lead to a frivolous claim in court just try to dismiss the case and be done with it all together right so and then the last one is fraud marriage okay fraud marriage well you know when somebody say let's get married and i'm gonna pay and you're gonna pay me then i'm gonna marry you that fraud marriage for the purpose of getting um, a U.S. citizenship or immigration benefit, it is fraud. And if you cannot fight this one, just know that you have a permanent bar and it cannot be waived. That, that's why we're talking about meeting statutory requirement first. So other than that, then you can waive other uh, staff. In today's video, we'll focus more on misrepresentation, okay? fraud and misrepresentation so once you meet the statutory requirement and then what is going to be the second thing the second thing is you have to have qualifying relatives u.s citizen child spouse or parent u.s citizen uh sorry lawful permanent permanent child spouse or parent those are the qualifying relatives for the purpose of applying for a waiver okay once you have one of those then you go to the third thing which is proving extreme hardship okay proving extreme hardship hardship is can be based on financial hardship can be based on the fact that uh the qualifying relative is sick hardship can be based just based on family reunification to keep the family together emotional distress so that's where we go to the case evaluation and ask you a lot of questions to come up with an argument on extreme hardship okay and you apply and hope that the, the waiver get granted so misrepresentation really is a big one because a lot of people they don't even realize that a misrepresentation has been has been made um, because they don't go back and research their previous applications that's why we say you have to file for FOIA right freedom of information requires so you can read and know what you have said previously 
For example, some people at the consulate, they say they were married before and come to find out here uh, that it was a lie because now they're getting a real marriage here, but because they said they were married before, the USCIS asked them for a divorce a decree from previous marriage. They don't have it because they, first they didn't even get married uh, to start with. So misrepresentation has occurred. So how do you uh, uh, cure that with a waiver, okay? I-601 waiver. So. This is it for today. We wanted to make sure that you understand the purpose of a waiver and how it can actually work for you so that you can apply with a waiver when a misrepresentation has been made. But you can apply for a waiver for a lot of uh, reasons. Could be fraud, could be misrepresentation, failure to appear in court, um, extreme hardship. Uh, some type of crimes that uh, can be waived. There are certain crimes that you can actually ask for a waiver for it, right, after rehabilitation and so forth. So if you need the consultation, again, 202-751-2180. Uh, consultation link is in the description box below. Uh, try Because those type of uh, waivers, right, it's not that easy to win. You need a qualifying attorney. If you do not have one, uh, you can call 202-751-2180 so we can help you out, okay? Especially now with this climate, uh, with this administration. So I'm, sh I'm seeing a lot of waivers being granted, okay? So let's do it. Get yourself together and get your green card.